Northern Central Station on a Saturday morning in May 2007. With the title in sight, this could be the most significant Bundesliga day for 49 years for the arriving Schalke fans. Among them, an Englishman. A lot of Schalke fans will be meeting at Dortmund Railway Station. And from 12 o'clock, they'll be marching together uh, to the stadium. They did it all last week with about 4,000 Schalke fans all dressed in white T-shirts. It's so nice, we're in your town, and it's a, it's a stunning visual. It's a, it's a stunning sight. The support for Schalke Nulvier is among the most fervent in the world. Powerful and passionate, Schalke is a German phenomenon. Schalke fans are the best in the world. They're the heartblood army. They give their body and soul. Schalke is a religion. It's unique here. When you were born into Schalke, then you are Schalke. You don't really get that in any other town. When a child is born into the world here, it becomes Schalke. Most of them are registered as members straight away. Schalke's in your heart. More than anywhere else, there is real heart here at Schalke. If you look at the fans, even at training sessions there are 2,000 supporters. I know people that will only have blue in their homes. They would die for Schalke. I'm the same. If someone says something against Schalke, I don't like it. As training sessions go, this one was pretty important for the fans and players who'd gathered in Gelsenkirchen, Schalke's city. Despite being arguably the best supporting club in Germany, Schalke hadn't won the Bundesliga now for almost 50 years. Now they were top of the table with just two matches to go. At the moment, everyone is thinking about only one thing, bringing the championship back to Gelsenkirchen after 49 years. There are no other thoughts. It's a really big step for us and also for our fans that have been supporting us for so many years. It means a lot, because the fans have been waiting for this for 49 years. I hope that we can do this for them, as well as for us, because to win this championship would be fantastic for everyone. It would be something sacred to the fans. They've been waiting for almost 50 years. So if we could become champions at Dortmund, it would be incredible for our supporters. So no wonder the fans were in great heart as they marched towards the Westfalen Stadium. But there was an extra edge still to this match, another dimension that made it even bigger than a mere title decider. It was to be against their bitter rivals, Borussia Dortmund. And Schalke against Dortmund is the biggest derby in Germany. The rivalry has been there for 50 years, and even more between Dortmund and Schalke. It's always been there. Dortmund against Schalke is the derby from hell. It's more important than my children. There's been this rivalry for years. It creates a bit of fire, which is great. Like fire and water. They don't go well together. For me, they're schlechte Menschen. As far as I'm concerned, they're bad people, just bad people. They've been on top over the years, and since we've been rivals, they've only shown aggressive feelings towards us, like every time Schalke lost. Dortmund and Schalke, the two clubs may be the footballing giants of Germany's industrial heartland, the Ruhr Valley, but at times it's impossible to persuade people of either Dortmund or Gelsenkirchen even to utter the names of their rivals from down the road. 40 kilometers and an emotional chasm separate the two teams. Each set of fans calls the other city de Verbotenenstadt, the forbidden city. It's an evil word for everyone at Schalke. We don't put that word into our mouths. It's either Ludenscheid Nord, Insectland, or the forbidden city.
man sagt verbotene Stadt. We say the forbidden city because it's forbidden to go there, to drive past there, or even through there. Wenn man an der Stadt vorbeifährt, you turn your air conditioning off when you do drive past there. And there's another saying too. For us, it's not just called the forbidden city, but instead it's Herne Ost. Herne is the town that lies next to Gelsenkirchen, so we say Herne Ost. There is a city called Dortmund, but we don't like to use that word. It's a name so common everywhere else, but it's never spoken by us. It's Ludenscheid Nord, or the insects, because they are black and yellow. Or we call it the Forbidden City. If anyone says the name, then they have to pay a fine into a swear box. That's how far it's gone. It's a phrase that's been embraced by football fans right across the Ruhr Valley. But the term Forbidden City was born at a meeting of some fanatical Schalke fans. It started off in the mid-90s where the Schalke fanzine that I was a part of, we had a, an editorial board meeting where somebody said, uh, I don't think we should ever write the word beginning with D at all in our fanzine, you know, it's, it, it shouldn't be in our fanzine. So we, we started considering alternatives. Uh, and one of the guys said, well, let's call them Ludenscheid or the team north of Ludenscheid. Whichever part you're from, the Ruger Beat is a close-knit industrial region that's always stoked up fanatical support. Coal mining, steelworks and the breweries of Dortmund were main sources of income and needed migrant workers for production. So people came in their thousands to the area, often from Eastern Europe. The people here were very hard workers. We call this area the coal bunker the Ruhr Valley. They worked hard and they searched for a release at the weekends, so they saved every penny they had and went to the football. I think it's always been the case that when people's lives weren't going well, then they went to the football. Those fans came to see stars like Aki Schmidt, who was part of the Borussia Dortmund side that won three German championships in the 50s and early 60s, and then the European Cup Winners' Cup too, in 1966. Klaus Fischer was a star from another age. He played for Schalke for the whole of the 1970s, and understands well how fundamental football was to this region of Germany. In the past there was nothing else but football, especially after the war. Football used to unite people. If one person had a ball, then you had a game for 20 people. And because of this, football is the number one game in Germany, ahead of any other sport. And so the seeds of Germany's greatest footballing rivalry were sown. The thousands that watched both Dortmund and Schalke on a Saturday would come face to face with their rival fans at work on a Monday morning. And it was there that people stirred up the rivalry. They started making bets on who would do better, Schalke or Dortmund. Because Dortmund were on the up. Schalke had been the undisputed kings of Germany, dominating the 30s, 40s and 50s. But while they still retain the hearts of the fans, success didn't come quite so easily in the following decades. Schalke, it seemed, were condemned to dream of better times. We often came very close, but never did quite enough to become German champions. We finished runners-up twice, but unfortunately, never as German champions. We had a good team back then, but sadly, we couldn't manage to knock Bayern Munich or Borussia Mönchengladbach off the top of the table. In 2001, Schalke came extremely close to winning that elusive championship. With a victory against Unterhaching in the bag, they thought they'd won the title as Bayern Munich conceded a late goal away to Hamburg. Cue wild celebrations in Gelsenkirchen. But they were premature. 
The match in Munich wasn't yet over. And the unthinkable happened as Patrick Anderson equalised for Bayern to clinch the Bundesliga title and deny Schalke. While Munich celebrated, Gelsenkirchen was plunged into despair. Schalke, so close once again, were left with just their tears. A crueler twist of fate would be hard for anyone to imagine. Whatever happens, Gelsenkirchen will always be a community united behind Schalke. It breathes Schalke. Every car, every window and every wall screams Schalke. The community may be struggling after the demise of traditional industries, but here the football team is very much alive. Gelsenkirchen is still a relatively poor town. We have the highest unemployment rate here in North Rhine-Westphalia. Everyone can identify themselves as Schalke and with football. On a Saturday you go to the football. You want to get away from your everyday life and you want the experience. Football gives you that experience. Schalke is a religion here. No one could doubt a Schalke fan's commitment. Which other club could send 20,000 fans to an away match, then at the same time sell 70,000 tickets for a public viewing at home for the same game? Such is the level of interest here that championship hopeful Schalke managed exactly that for the crucial match against Borussia Dortmund in May 2007. Dortmund too have an absolutely fanatical set of fans. On average, 83,000 cram into the Westfalen Stadium for every home match. We have a very big fan community, of which we are very proud. We are much loved in Germany. This is really important to us, as the fans come to us and they suffer with the team. You can never overestimate this, especially when you think about the amount of cost that is involved and the amount of time they invest. Borussia Dortmund's fans are unique. We have a huge fan community. The stadium was built in the 90s for 83,000 fans. So this community has been growing every year. So it's a great thing to support Borussia. Along with Bayern Munich, Schalke have the most football fan clubs in the world. We have 1,300 fan clubs that we oversee, with about 64 to 65,000 members. Those are numbers to be proud of. So often around the giants of European football, fans have seen their influence diminish over the years. But not at Schalke and Dortmund, where fans have a real say. Both clubs listen to views on ticket pricing, on preserving standing room at their ground. And when Schalke moved to their new stadium, the Veltins Arena, the fans were consulted. The club asked us to set up a, a working group where representatives of different Schalke fan groupings sat down. And we had about six meetings where we basically drew up a blueprint of what kind of stadium the fans wanted. There was no question that the new stadium was going to have standing. I mean, we, we would have liked to have seen 25,000 standing, uh, but we got 15, so, you know, we're, we're quite happy with that. For Derby Day, both grounds would be packed to the rafters. As Schalke Dortmund derbies go, this promised to be a classic, but then there had been many of those over the years. The best one I remember was when we were 2-1 down in the Forbidden City in the 90th minute. That was in 1997, when Schalke equalised with a quarter of an hour to go. Only for Andreas Merler to restore Dortmund's lead just four minutes later. And then our goalkeeper Jens Lehmann came forward in the last minute to head home the equaliser.
That was wonderful. But by 2002, Jens Lehmann was playing for Dortmund, and Schalke fans had to watch from afar as Dortmund celebrated their sixth Bundesliga title. We hate it when the Forbidden City win the championship. Although we have helped them become champions twice. Because in crucial deciding games, we beat their nearest challengers. They've done it with the help of the blue and white of Schalke. Gelsenkirchen, though, has had some success to celebrate. They may not have been champions for 50 years, but Schalke had an impressive run to win the UEFA Cup in 1997. Nobody ever expected Schalke to, to win the UEFA Cup. Nobody, nobody even at Schalke expected them to have a chance to actually get to final and beat Inter Milan uh, in Milan uh, in the second leg. It was just amazing. But Ruger beat glory wasn't just Schalke's for long. A matter of days later, Borussia Dortmund managed to shock Europe by winning the Champions League final against Juventus. Michael Zork was part of that team. It stays in the memory for a long time. For the club, it was a milestone as Borussia Dortmund became known throughout the rest of Europe and the whole world. A few months later, we went on to beat Cruzeiro in the final of the Intercontinental Cup. And this really made Borussia Dortmund famous. So, in the matter of just one week, the two rivals from the same area had brought Europe's top trophies back home to the Ruhr. The reaction from one forbidden city to the other was quite surprising. We were proud of our area, the coal bunker as we call it. We'd won the Champions League and the UEFA Cup between us. What more could you want? We also have a rivalry with Bavaria, and so this was a win for our region. You may have expected it to take the shine off, but I think <laughs> even, you know, <clears throat> people would just say, oh, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. We've won the UEFA Cup. That doesn't matter. OK, they've gone and won that other thing. Uh, but, yeah, well, it's, that just shows how, how, how good we are in the raw, you know? <laughs> Good excuse. <laughs> so peace had broken out between the forbidden cities, but not for long. Dortmund and Schalke, always. Caramba. It wouldn't be the Ruhr rivalry without the odd practical joke. Like when some Dortmund fans got their picture taken with Mirko Slomka, the Schalke coach. It was a prank that some of the fans had thought of. They went to the Schalke training session and had photos taken with the manager. They were holding a scarf that was blue and white, but it said Scheiß Schalke. The manager didn't notice this and the photo ended up on so many computers and we all had a really good laugh. The Schalke fans didn't find it funny, but it was a prank that didn't hurt anyone, so it was great. But sometimes the joke is at your own expense. Dortmund fans weren't so happy when their famous banner was stolen. The banner was stolen from the south stand, and we suspect the Schalke fans were responsible. During the week before one, one game, not long before the, the derby at Schalke, uh, it disappeared. Of course, everyone pointed the finger at the Schalke fans, uh, but nobody's ever admitted to, to taking it. Uh, and nobody knows where it is, nobody knows who, who took it. I suspect that it's been burned, because if anyone gets caught with it, then it would mean a prison sentence. So I can't imagine that anyone would want to be seen with it. No jokes, though, at the Westfalen Stadium Dortmund. After a disappointing season, Thomas Dole's team were desperate to give their fans something to enthuse about. This time it's for the championship, so if we win or manage to take points off Schalke, then that will make it very difficult for them to become champions. So it would be a dream to break Schalke's hearts. I think that if we win against Schalke on Saturday, then the fans will forgive us for the bad season we've had. We will give it our all, from the first to the eleventh man. Schalke's march arrived at the stadium, three and a half kilometers. But that was the easy part of the day over. Now for the serious stuff. Indescribable. We've been waiting for this for 49 years. We've been waiting, and on top of that, we're in the Forbidden City. I can't describe it. It's like Christmas, Easter, the birth of a child, marriage, everything together. If we win, that's how good it could be. I'm going to go to the hospital.
I look at how our fans are suffering. If Schalke have a chance of becoming German champions, then I have to say that they can't be allowed to win the title. I'd rather a different club won. That's as honest as I can be. Whoever wins the derby, we will have a peaceful year and I can sleep well. But if Borussia win this Saturday, then it'll be fantastic and we'll be the happiest people in the world. I hope that the team does everything it can to win this match. Maybe the football gods will be wearing more blue and white than black and yellow, and we will win the game. For Schalke in particular then, Judgment Day. There were around 150,000 fans packed into both stadiums. As their team walked out, every fan in blue and white knew that a win over Dortmund would not just be a victory in the Ruhr Valley derby, but would virtually hand them that long-awaited Bundesliga title. No wonder then, plenty of nerves at the Valtins Arena. And rightly so, as the home side tore into Schalke, as though their season depended on it. Then good news from Gelsenkirchen. Both title rivals, Stuttgart and Werder Bremen, were losing. The news filtered through to the Schalke fans in Dortmund, but coach Schlonka knew his team still needed to do their bit. Chances came and went. More news, Stuttgart had equalised. Could Schalke get the goal that would settle their nerves? Back in Gelsenkirchen and another update, Stuttgart had gone behind once again. Could it be Schalke's day after all? Then this happened. Schalke gave the ball away on the halfway line. Alexander Frey made no mistake from a pinpoint cross. And Schalke fans had that sinking feeling. Into the second half and Slomka's side needed a goal more than ever. But it just didn't look like coming. Then, even worse, Stuttgart had drawn level and then gone ahead at Barkham. The title looked to be slipping away. For Dortmund, Christoph Metzelder tried his luck from just inside the box and Ebi Smolarek made the most of the ricochet. 2-0. Their season saved and they'd inflicted a fatal blow on their rivals. Back in Gelsenkirchen, they knew only too well what that goal meant. No need for the final whistle to confirm that Schalke had all but blown their hopes of winning the Bundesliga. Something they hadn't done for almost 50 years. The table confirmed their desperation, but the Schalke fans would keep supporting their club and, of course, they'd keep on singing. For those who have the Schalke virus, and there are many in the Ruhr Valley and indeed throughout Germany, supporting their side may often end in tears. But make no mistake, these fans will be back at the Veltins Arena next season and the season after. And one day, you never know, they may just see their team lift the Bundesliga title.